Hello everyone, welcome to another battle report for my channel. We have today another Kings of War battle report. This is report 23 for me. Uh, this is a Dwarves versus Undead at 1500 points. The scenario is Pillage. So this is game three of a three game tournament hosted by the Outlanders Gaming Guild in Omaha, Nebraska. Um, at this point I am actually at table one. Um, I had in the previous two reports, uh, won both of those games, um, and that, uh, not unsuspectingly, put me up to the first table. So, um, we'll hop right in. Um, this is my list. I brought dwarves. So, as a top to bottom, we have bulwarkers and a regiment with a brew of strength, ironclad and a troop, two troops of rangers, shield breakers, horde, brew of sharpness, earth elementals, horde, blessing of the gods, army standard bearer, the Boomstick, a uh, ranger captain with wings of honey maze, a stone priest with a bane chant upgrade, and one greater earth elemental. Now into the undead list. The undead have two ghoul troops, um, two troops of soul reaver infantry, a troop of wraiths, um, two hordes of zombie trolls, one with the scrying gem, Two Balefire Catapults, the Cursed Pharaoh with Wings of Honey Maze, and a Necromancer with the Inspiring Talisman. So, um, right away, just looking at this, and I and I and I cringe because I know Flying Pharaoh is is going to be a pain. Um, I don't have a lot to deal with it. So, um, we'll step right in, and I'll try not to spoil the outcome of this game. Um, but I I will make a couple of indications on important events um, that I think push this game one way or the other so uh, and again I, I didn't take a great picture for this game because it was again it was table one um, I was trying to concentrate and didn't end up taking as good of pictures as I normally would but so um, here we go um, and the scrying gem for deployment didn't end up rolling I think he rolled a one so I had to put down two troops or two you know two drops instead of one so it wasn't quite such a big deal but so from right to left, bale, bale, bale fire catapult, um, wraiths troop, zombie horde of, or troll, zombie troll horde, the cursed pharaoh is behind them, the ghouls next to them, bale fire catapult in the woods, another horde of zombie trolls, um, ghoul troop, behind the ghoul troop is one of the revenant, so soul reaver infantry, that's where they are. And next to them is the other Soul Reel, Reaver Infantry. Oh, so this is my side after Vanguard. Um, you can see my Fly King, or right, not my Fly King, my Fly Ranger Captain is way up. Um, those Rangers on the left are up, but out of charge range of the Wraiths. Everything else you can see, I have my Earth Elementals and my Grid Earth Elemental hanging out by the forest. The, the uh, Stone Priest is behind them. Um, the Bull Workers. Next to them, um, next to the bulwark, it's a boomstick operating army standard bear. Uh, we have a horde of shield breakers behind there, and in front of them, a troop of ironclad. And then way up, we have some uh, vanguarded rangers on the other side. So, this is what the board looks like. Overall, I'm actually really happy with the deployment. Um, I, th I think I did about as everything as I could do right here. Um, well, I mean, in, in retrospect, um, I think I think I've overwhelmed a side of it. You can see there are actually seven uh, tokens on the board. This is pillage, and we rolled the <laughs> full seven. So most of them are actually kind of in the middle, um, middle to far side of the board from this perspective. Um, the furthest one is inside those fences, but otherwise you can see there's three in the middle. Um, when I was placing my tokens, what I what I made sure was not to put a token in a good vantage point for him to put a catapult on. So I, I never placed a token by a hill or in a forest. Um, I didn't expect his catapults to live, but I didn't want him to be able to claim a token simply by leaving his catapult in place. So most of the tokens are in the middle and out in the open ground. So turn one. Um, turn one goes to, the, goes to the undead. He won. He won the roll off and chose to go first. I don't blame him. Um, I was a little sad. I was kind of hoping for that first turn, but 
that's all right. Um, but it is it is a start of the things where I say, hey, pay, pay attention to this. So uh, he, he just moves up um, for the most part. He turns his wraiths around because he sees where my, my flying ranger captain is going. Um, so essentially he's just kind of pointing at them. Um, otherwise he just moves up somewhat timidly. Uh, and I think a little, a little surging goes on. Um, he does cast quite a few surges and I'll point out the important ones as the same as when I cast an important surge, I'll point out the important surges. So sorry for the blurry picture here, but here's what it looks like. Um, the end of turn one. So we move into dwarves turn one. Uh, my rangers move up and around. Um, my dwarves and everyone else are kind of timid. I'm kind of just trying to stretch out my line on the left um, so that I can really kind of get him outflanked. I actually have a lot more bodies than him, and I'm trying to really take advantage of that. Um, one thing I forget to show, here's the other side. So the, the basically the elemental is just that still. Um, and the ranger, I, I missed this, we'll show you later, but the, the ranger, flying ranger captain did charge the catapult on the hill. Um, one of the other things I fail is there are two ghoul troops here. The ghoul troop on the left is shot and killed by the rangers. So you won't see them again, but I forgot to take a picture of it. The ghoul troop on the right is shot by their other rangers and wavered. Um, they just have an atrocious nerve, like an 810 or something, so it's pretty easy. And here you can see my ranger captain on the hill um, fails to kill the catapult, which at first... As you can see in the overview here, I was kind of bummed by it because I thought, oh no, now the wraiths are going to come get my ranger captain. Um, so I, I was hoping he was going to kill, overrun, get over the hill, and then be out of line of sight, and then to go kill the captain next turn, but or go kill the other catapult next turn, but it didn't quite work that way. So uh, we move into turn two, and turn two, what you see is he didn't put those wraiths into that ranger captain. Um, he decided the, well, I'm assuming he decided because he did this, he, he put the he flew the wraiths over so that they would be in the flank. Um, a flanking opportunity with a surge of my rangers on that side. Um, you can see everyone else moved up. And you can also see that, that one of those ghoul troops is gone. So here's his other side. He's moving up fairly aggressively. He knows he has my he has me outranged. Everything he has is um, generally movement 6. Um, even the zombie trolls are movement 6. So everything, he, he has me outranged basically everywhere. So, uh, as I said, I'll point out my the important surges, and this is one. And they, they didn't actually do that well. I think if I would have been inspired, I might have held out. But um, he successfully routes my rangers and overruns. So here's what the board looks like. Um, bottom of undead two, uh, dwarves, un dwarves two. Again, I don't, I don't move. I actually shift back a little bit. I shift back and over. Um, I'm not in a hurry to get in combat. I have him outranged for the most part. Um, and well, well I, I, I think I should have been more aggressive on the left side. I should have committed this turn because um, I have a troop of ironclad to feed him. And I should have fed it to him this turn um, just so that I would take half half of him at a time instead of all of him at once. I, I think that's probably a mistake on my part. I should have been more aggressive on the side of the dwarves. The golems probably were fine to hang back because they're not going to really benefit much by moving up and getting getting flanked anywhere. Um, oh, yeah, so my ranger captain hit. No, he's still up there. So here's him killing that catapult. And he does overrun, but he doesn't get over the hill. So, it's fine. Um, so, we move into Undead turn 3. Uh, undead turn 3 looks like this. He is slowly moving up. He knows he doesn't have to give me a charge. So, he just keeps moving up. So, he's within 12 inches. Um, but out of 10 inches. So, same here. Um, you can see he just moves up. He just keeps, his, keeps himself pretty well occupied. Um, I am trying to shoot those Reavers solar reavers a little bit but it's not um it's not enough um so his catapult actually does get a shot off. one of this is the only time his catapult hits anything because i think he got something like first turn he got two shots second turn he got one shot and yeah, third turn he gets one shot so he got four shots and he hits once uh, and he does four damage to my greater earth elemental but that's okay 
he can take four damage. So this is what it looks like afterwards. Um, so dwarves turn three, uh, dwarves turn three, I commit to being charged, essentially. Um, I move my ironclad right up to the soul reavers, um, right in their face. I move my uh, bowl worker regiment up, but not enough. I should have moved them up more. Because um, you can see there that I moved them up expecting him to charge him. And I was like, well, this is fine. Go for it. What I, what I should have done was move them to block off a charge to my uh, uh, shield breakers. Or at least put something in the way. Um, I didn't put anything in the way. And we'll see how that goes. Um, on this side, again, I'm, I'm accepting the charge. And I'm what I've done is I've turned the greater earth elemental. So those two... Uh, guys on the far right, the the lower zombie troll horde, and the reavers will be in his front. I moved the stone priest up so that the other zombie troll horde wouldn't get a flank on him. If they wanted it, they just couldn't make that. And essentially, just, I've just positioned myself for charges all the way around. Um, the ranger captain up here charged and killed the last catapult. And here's what it looks like. Um, after, after turn three, um, we did have people watching us and checking over and they they kept wondering if we were actually going to fight at some point. Um, cause you know, we were on the top table, so it was somewhat curious. So we move into turn four and turn four, we do indeed fight. Um, this right unit of zombie trolls is actually where the bottom of the base, the movement tray is. So ignore where the, the trolls are, but he charges my character, my stone priest. So that's fine. Over here, you see what I wasn't seeing is that his reavers could get into my shield breaker horde. Now, I wasn't as worried about this at the time. I was like, well, okay. You know, they have a lot of attacks. They're going to do a lot of damage, but they're inspired. They're 21, 23, you know, they should, they should be okay. I mean, they're going to get, they're going to get smacked up good, but let's hope they stay. Uh, the other reavers uh, go into their their ironclad chaff, and down. Um, you can see the uh, zombie trolls went into my bulwarker regiment, and not anywhere else. So, an overview of that: his wraith just stayed back, um, not committing at this point, which is probably fine. Uh, and you can see one of his his ghoul troops just hanging out up there, at this point that's already been damaged. So just some more shots of that for some reason. Um, we go into combat, and I think these guys took more than 11 points of damage. I just was like, I took enough damage. Go ahead. And don't roll double ones. And he didn't. Now here, these 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 Reavers, right, they have 20 attacks. So, so this is actually quite amazing for a troop. It's, you know, I guess they are very expensive. Um, they come in, and he does 17 points of damage. So he rolled 20 dice essentially twice and only missed three of them so he was rolling he was hitting on threes and he was wounding on twos very common that he would do a ton but oh my gosh 17 is preposterous so he wavered my i mean luckily they survived honestly but he he did waver wavered my uh, shield breaker horde which is phenomenal amount of work uh over here these guys don't take that much damage but he rolls an eight plus twice so they should have they should have held out but you know sometimes sometimes the odds are against you so they're routed um the oh I, yeah the uh, flying uh, pharaoh finally commits to his chaff duty and goes and ruins these earth elementals day so they're stuck forever um, the zombie trolls here do six points of damage to my stone priest who you can't really see but they actually only end up wavering him. Um, he just didn't roll that good. The stone priest is an 11-13, so, you know, it wasn't impossible that he would stay. I just wish I had that luck somewhere else. Don't need the stone priest. Um, so, that's what it looks like to turn four. So, we move into dwarves, turn four, and we start for headstrong. And my shield breakers fail it. So, count this to as another one of those things where it's 50-50. Let's see what happens. And they fail it. So now they're going to sit still. And that's huge. That's huge for my opponent. The Stone Priest, on the other hand, makes his headstrong. Yeah. Which is 
fine, I guess. He can go run around some more. Um, and on the top there, you can see the uh, ranger captain has charged the flank of the ghouls at the top. So, uh, And on the other side, you can see my rangers um, in next to the shield breakers could see and could perform the movement to get into the flank of the soul reavers. So, which was, which was pretty good. I mean, yeah, the shield breakers can't move and that's a bummer. I could have used them, but Hey, you know, flank charge from Rangers is also pretty bad. And you can also see my army standard bearer went to sacrifice himself to the, uh, zombie trolls, um, in the hope to, uh, save the shield breakers. So you can see, uh, just another shot of how it looks. Um, we go into shooting, and I think the boomstick shoots these guys, um, but it's not enough. The ranger captain, not not surprisingly, beats up these beats up some ghouls. Um, the, the earth elementals do one point of damage. I wasn't able to bane chant them because the stone priest was uh, disordered. But yeah, one point of damage. That was that was pretty sad. Um, but whatever, I know that that Pharaoh is a, a notoriously, uh, uh, I would I don't want to say cheesy, but yeah, I, I'm being as cheesy as I can be too. There's, there's no, there's no wrong in this. It's just a, a notorious character for its points. It's amazing. Uh, and over here, another big, big folly. I'm trying not to get too negative in this report, but these Rangers, I come into the flank and I waver. I waver. Oh, that was, that's rough. That's rough. 20 attacks, hitting on fours, wounding on fours, six damage. Ugh. Which I guess, you know, is actually kind of about average. But they're only 11, 13. So I just didn't roll. I just didn't roll well um, on the nerve check. I just, it just failed it. So what are you going to do? Um, so there's the end of Doris turn four. Um, and you guys can kind of see how this is going to go. So turn five. Turn five, the charges you would expect. Uh, my my uh, rangers are flanked. Um, the ghoul, or the ghouls. The uh, zombie zombie trolls go into my armor standard bear. Um, for some reason, I didn't take pictures of the other side's movement, but we'll get there. Um, so, of course, I just made him not roll double ones, and he didn't. So they're gone. Um... The army standard bearer was also killed, not surprisingly. He was just a speed bump. Um, these, on this side, the wraiths just move up. He, he doesn't commit them. Uh, and these zombie trolls go into my greater earth, or earth elemental, and they do like three damage or something. It's okay. Nothing terribly much. And you can see the pharaoh went into the earth elementals and did a like two points of damage or something. Nothing nothing spectacular. Um, it's just another view of that. A bit of an overview so you can see where everything is. Um, essentially my shield breakers are now all alone. <laughs> uh, and my elementals are, are still doing what the elementals do. So, uh, again, a few movement pictures here uh, missing. But instead of going just back into those zombie trolls, I turn, move my greater earth elemental, and surge him into combat here. Um, he's just, he's not going to kill those zombie trolls. They're like a 17, uh, fearless. And he only has eight attacks. So even if he hits, which he's going to hit four of them and he's going to, you know, wound on two. So at most he's probably going to do is three or four damage. It's not, it's not going to get anywhere. So what he can go kill though, is he's not inspired, um, uh, reaver or uh, reavers, um, wraiths. Uh, you can see the ranger captain there joining in with him. Uh, and my earth elementals just go back into the, what's it called? Oh, yeah, pharaoh. Um, and my shield breakers go into the reavers in front of them. So, uh, da -da 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 -da. just showing another picture of that looks like for fun. Oh, yeah, I killed I killed the reaver, the wraiths. I don't, I don't know if I have an appropriate picture of that. Um, I actually did a ton of damage here. Um, I attempted to bane chant and failed to bane chant my earth elementals. And actually, I think if that bane chant would have got off, I might have actually killed that zombie. I just rolled out of the box and I did seven damage to him, which was great. But um, it wasn't even enough to waver him. Um, of course, the shield breakers take out that that troop of troop of reavers. They're that's not a problem for them. 
and I actually just back them up as my uh, my aftermath. So um, there you go. You can see that I killed that trooper, raced at the bottom, and turned around. Um, nothing terribly surprising about that. So turn six. Um, turn six. He's just finishing up with me. Um, you can see the shield breakers are getting charged. Um, this is part. Oh yeah, this is the movement. Um, he flanks my other horde of earth elementals, which I should have seen. Um, this was a mistake on my part. I could have put my stone priest um, in the way again and just sacked him out for the rest of the game, but I didn't, um, which is a big mistake on my part. I actually think one of the, the bigger ones of what I did. Um, so there's that. Uh, surge. So we've got a, a, a nice earth elemental sandwich there. Um, of course, these guys are routed. Uh, 15 points of, I think they ended up doing like 13 points of damage in total additionally to my earth elementals, which, you know, those guys are really tough. Um, but, you know, he didn't roll double once, twice. So, it is. Um, Undead 6 looks like this, and I only have one more slide. Um, this was just showing in, in an attempt to see. So, those, those uh, undead trolls on the right, or zombie trolls on the right, are actually facing my earth elemental. He had reformed them after that combat and just being lazy, just turned one around because oh, whatever, it's turn six. So at the end of turn six, what I attempted to do was I I triple charged the zombie trolls on the right to hope that maybe if I kill him and there's a turn seven, I have a chance to make this a tie. Well, this is you know very, very low, but that's all I could do. So my ranger captain my stone priest and my greater earth elemental go into those zombie trolls but they can't do it um it's close actually they did a lot of damage but i just couldn't roll it so in the end um the undead have two and there wasn't a turn seven uh, spoilers i guess anyway uh, in the end the undead have two uh tokens or you know they're holding two points and the dwarves have zero so it's a it's a solid undead victory um thoughts on the game it I don't. I don't want to sound negative about it. I think there were there were events in it that make me feel negative, but in the in the end, it was a, a wonderfully thought provoking game. Um, this is obvious for me that the best opponent I've ever played um, up to this point. He um, he won the last Warhammer GT I actually went to, and he was quite obvious. He knew what he was doing and was calculating um, constantly what we we're playing. He always. I mean, it was it was obvious to me. He always had my sheet out looking at what everything did, familiarizing himself, and making decisions based on that. So, um, yeah, I, I I hate, I, I don't think I lost this game inherently because of luck. I think this was almost basically a draw, and luck pushed it to one of the others. I, I mean, that's, that's making kind of a bold statement about it. I, I lost the game, no question. Um, it's, it's, it's a game that's win and lost, but, um, yeah, I, I would have done a few things different, but, f but for the most part, if, if it seemed more like, at least from my perspective, I played the game right, and he just played the game a little better and had a little bit of, maybe a little better dice on his side. So, anyway, um, I'm going to do a wrap-up of the tournament after this, but, although, I mean, it was a great game, don't, I just, again, I don't want to be too negative on it or am I anything like that. My opponent earned it. Um, he ended up taking first place, of course, and then it knocked me down to, like, fourth or so place. Um... Because I got, I got beat pretty badly. So, anyway, uh, thanks for watching, guys. And we'll get you on the next one.